Welcome everybody to this session on fulfillment pickup locations, also known as enhanced personal delivery. This is part of our Alma 2024 roadmap webinar series. I am Yoel Kortik and we have with us today, Mr. Moshe Schechter from Alma Product Management. Moshe, thank you for joining us. A little brief introduction before we turn this over to Moshe. Uh, this is part of our Alma 2024 Roadmap webinar series. I'm going to put in the chat the link to this page, just in case anybody, for whatever reason, doesn't already have it. Those of you viewing this via the YouTube recording, you will find a link to the Alma 2024 Roadmap webinar series page in the chat, uh, excuse me, in the description of the video. Uh, so we already had a session on the bibliographic record and physical inventory retention in Alma. And today we are on the f fulfillment personal delivery pickup locations. On this page, you will also see a link to the PowerPoint, which Moshe will be showing. And after the session, we will be putting here the link to the recording as well, like we did for the previous session. That link will also be on our education's webinars page. Uh, and just a note that next month we will be showing the data visualization dashboards for physical books retention and physical books deselections. Uh, we've also got already for June scheduled the link data in Alma. You can already register for that via these registration links and a whole series of additional sessions as part of this Alma 2024 roadmap webinar series. So regarding today's session, the first, the fulfillment personal delivery pickup locations, this was originally added to Alma in the February release, uh, excuse me, the November release of Alma 20, of the Alma 2023 November release. And you can see that here in the release notes as well. Let's just take a look here. Here it is, the addition of personal delivery locations. And this originally came from an ideas exchange request. Ideas exchange, for those of you who may not be familiar, let's switch to the ideas exchange, is a method where institutions can log into the ideas exchange and suggest an addition to Alma, an enhancement to Alma. And other institutions can also vote for that enhancement. And that's how this addition came to Alma. Uh, an institution came and suggested it. Other institutions came and voted for it. This was officially closed later on in January 2024 after it was already added and confirmed. Uh, if during the session anyone has a question or a comment, feel free to send it into the chat. And myself and or Moshe will comment on that chat. So without further ado, Moshe, I'm going to stop sharing and turn this over to you. And thanks again for joining us. Go ahead, Moshe, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, let's just see that I'm able to share the right screen. Yep, we see you, Moshe. All right, okay, great. Okay, so uh, um, so thank you for uh, uh, for joining us. Um, I uh, I've asked Joel to uh, 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 to be able to uh, talk to you about uh, the personal delivery uh, feature. That's something that has actually been uh, deployed in the November release, November twenty three. So it's a few months back, uh, and actually there were it's it's a kind of a, a feature that has a number of features bundled uh, together. Um, and that may be a little uh, confusing because uh, yeah, there may be different types of use cases and different types of uh, uses of this uh, feature. You can use parts of the development without other parts of it. Uh, so I was hoping to uh, get some time to uh, talk to you about uh, what's in it, uh, what's not in it, uh, so that we all know what uh, what we can do with this. And, and I hope you do find the advantages of, of making use of that uh, feature. So, uh, like you all uh, mentioned, uh, this um, um, was voted in, in Ideas Exchange, but it also came from other uh, channels. So, uh, um, well, we got to develop this uh, based on the Ideas Exchange, but also based on other 
um, uh, requests that uh, have come in, in multiple channels about, about this. Um, and it actually, as I mentioned, bundles a number of uh, features. One is the basic ability to uh, expand the number of personal delivery uh, locations. The ability to request for personal delivery is something that um, has been all along uh, uh, an option for requests uh, in Alma, uh, something that many of us uh, used a lot during uh, COVID where getting into the library and actually using a resource uh, was, was a problem. Um, but even before COVID and, and after, it's still a, a popular service that many libraries uh, offer as service to their patrons. And until this development uh, has come along, the options for, uh, for the library were to offer a personal delivery for a home address or office address or both. And these were the only personal delivery options that the system uh, supported. And with this uh, feature, there's an option to allow additional personal delivery locations. So in addition to the home address or office address, um, you could define additional uh, personal delivery locations. So there could be different uh, reading rooms or different um, of labs where patrons may want to request uh, library resources for use. Um, so whatever other places uh, in the library that uh, could serve as personal delivery locations could be added uh, by configuration. We'll talk about how that is done. And that's, you can think of that as, as one uh, feature that uh, stands in its own. It's uh, uh, another ability to have additional uh, personal delivery locations. But that was released with another feature that kind of uh, adds on on top of that, but is, you can think of it as an independent type of uh, feature, which is allowing the patrons to populate the personal delivery location information on their own. So instead of having uh, predefined personal delivery locations, patrons, or you can enable patrons to specify the details of their own personal delivery uh, locations, uh, so uh, a specific patron could have uh, two personal delivery locations, which are this patron's uh, um, uh, favorites. So they uh, uh, define the personal delivery uh, uh, one for themselves and a personal delivery two for themselves, and they use uh, um, one or the other as they want. Um, and this is independent from the other option, which just enables additional personal delivery locations without enabling the patrons to um, change that personal delivery locations information. So what we want to go through in the next couple of minutes is talk about these two parts of this uh, feature and how they can use together or separately uh, to create a number of potential uh, uses uh, for you that we're hoping you can uh, make use of and, and uh, enjoy the benefits uh, from. Um, on that release note from the November uh, release, uh, which you see in front of you right now, uh, there were links also to additional um, documentation as well as a, a little uh, video that also explains a little bit about, about that. But yeah, let's talk about these uh, different use cases and uh, um, how they can be used uh, by you. So perhaps we'll take a step back and just start with personal delivery and what personal delivery is and how it's uh, used. And I am assuming that uh, many of you uh, which are on this uh, uh, call uh, are here because you know something about personal delivery or perhaps even using personal delivery. Um, so we don't need to talk too much about that. But basically, uh, personal delivery is an option where you can allow a service to uh, some or all of your patrons to request items, um, mainly hold requests, uh, to be picked up at a location that is not a library pickup location. So it's not a circulation desk within the library but is ra rather an address that is a, a personal address. Um, and the way that this is configured before this uh, feature is that on the request terms of use, which is what we see in front of us uh, right now. Um, so we see the, um, the uh, um, personal delivery uh, policy on the request terms of use. And it could have a number of configuration options. It could be configured to uh, not allow personal delivery or to allow office address, work address, or home address, or both. 
And being that this is a terms of use, it's very flexible because you can assign this to specific collections locations or to specific users or a specific combination of users and uh, locations. In this example here, you can see that I was using the fulfillment configuration utility to look up at a specific item and a specific uh, patron and uh, to pull up the terms of use that would apply for this item plus this uh, patron. And there's a personal delivery policy here that says pick up at, uh, at office. Um, so you could be for, you could have it for users of a specific uh, type, all of these users, uh, or you could have it for specific uh, locations and all the items in these locations, or you can have only for specific locations plus specific patrons, uh, the same stuff that you can do with um, other policies in the terms of use. So that's a first prerequisite for setting up personal delivery, the policy on the terms of use. And the second is, of course, having the personal delivery addresses, that is the home or work addresses, configured on the patron account. So what we're looking at right now is a specific patron account, and we can see that there is a home address and a work address that have been, in this case, preloaded for this user from the SAS feed, so their external data. And there are two addresses here. One is um, home address, the other is work address. And the result of having these two configurations in place is that this patron, when uh, placing a request, will have a work address option, a personal delivery work address uh, option. And the reason is that the terms of use allowed the office or work address as an option. Um, and so that although the patron has also a home address, the policy only allows the work address, so only the work address shows in here. The patron can select that and the request could, will be uh, submitted and go through the personal delivery workflow, which will not go through its uh, entirety right now. Um, but that's the basic, that's where all this starts uh, from. So all that is before the uh, uh, this additional or enhanced personal delivery options. Now let's take a look at what uh, this additional enhancement uh, allows us to do. So very basically, we can use just the first part of this to just create additional pickup locations. Uh, and these pickup locations can be pickup locations that are managed by the library. So for example, we could have, let's say, um, five labs where patrons can request items for pickup um, at, uh, and perhaps another two reading rooms um, that we want to enable as a personal delivery, right? There's also the reading room functionality, which is a separate thing, but let's talk about a room where you want to send items to as a personal delivery type of uh, service. But you don't want the patrons to actually uh, define these locations. These are known locations. Those labs or those reading rooms or whatever uh, are just there and you just want to enable patrons to use them. So basically we use the um, uh, enable additional delivery location option, which would be going through the fulfillment configuration and accessing the menu for additional personal delivery address uh, types. And in there, you would have 10 options for adding up to 10 personal delivery uh, locations. You could see that this uh, code table out of the box has 10 personal delivery locations, which are all disabled out of the box. So nothing is automatically switched on for you. But you can turn on as many additional pickup locations, up to 10, as uh, you would want. In my example here, I added uh, one, I enabled one, which has this code, PDLIV address one. And I changed its description from the out of the box personal delivery address type one to uh, a label that is how I wanna call this personal delivery. I just called it pickup address. This could be third floor uh, uh, lab or uh, east wing uh, reading room or whatever you wanna designate as an additional pickup location. And so then in my terms of use, in the request terms of use, and that's the second uh, requisite for using this, would be to use the uh, added additional personal delivery policy, which would be personal delivery all. Personal delivery all uh, is an additional um, option that if enabled, would enable the page when to request home or work or the additional pickup locations all would show up as an option. 
There is an option to say only the additional ones. So if you make use of this all option to say additional pickup locations, it means that uh, home address and uh, personal delivery, um, additional personal delivery uh, will all uh, um, be an option. Uh, but in the configuration that we are currently discussing, they will just show up as uh, options on the request form. And then you can use those uh, personal delivery locations um, by adding them to the patrons as additional address type for all the address that are um, expected to be able to make use of this additional pickup location. So what we're seeing here is actually a an SAS feed. So you can see um, my uh, SAS feed. You notice the XML that is used for the SAS feed. But then down here where there's the uh, personal, the, the address information in this feed, you can see that I'm using uh, an address type, which is the P delivery address one, which is um, what was the code on the uh, uh, code table that we looked at before. So P delivery address one would be the way to add a personal delivery of type one, which we call pickup address uh, on this uh, user. And then you could put it in here, whatever, you know, let's say it's a, a lab. You put that the lab information line one, would say uh, third floor uh, uh, lab. Um, and we just, by this feed, be added to all the patrons that uh, this comes as part of their user information feed. Uh, they would have that additional pickup address on their uh, user record. And it would look like this. So the user um, will have the home address and work address in my case, because they did have that in my feed, but would have also the pickup address as an option, you can see that it would come in as an external um, um, address because it came through the SAS feed. Um, and it's just here on my uh, patron's account. And therefore, when the request form will be opened up for this uh, patron, uh, my patron will have a home address, work address, and pickup address as options. They all are options on the pickup location uh, field. And if the patron would select the pickup address, then um, the system will know the address of that pickup location because it's been preloaded to the uh, user account. Um, so you can have it preloaded to all user accounts. You can have it preloaded only to user accounts that are eligible for this uh, service. Um, either way, as you can see, the service here would be for the patron to select a pickup address or you know whatever you name it out of the list of pickup locations and just place a request and from there on it goes on as a normal personal delivery request uh, just as it would for a home address or a work address so in this use case we haven't changed much the uh, the service it's a personal delivery service the only thing that we've changed is that you can have um, you don't have to use home address and work address you can have pickup address and you can have it in addition or instead of home address and the page will just select and just uh, use it. So that will be one uh, way to, to use these additional pickup locations. But then you can use it together with the additional option, which is to make the patrons be able to uh, manage or update those uh, pickup locations. And that would be done, uh, that could be done in Primo V, um, and that could be done by customizing the request form, the old request um, form. Uh, and you would do this from the discovery menu, hold and pick up request, which is where you configure the hold request form. And you would have additional options for adding to the form uh, out of the box, the display to public field for all of those is no. So again, nothing turned on uh, without you opting in to use this feature. But as you can see in my example, I have selected to use a few of those fields, but not all of them. So I've turned on three address lines and the um, state or po and postal code as additional fields on my request form. But I haven't activated a fourth address line and the city one. That's really up to you. Uh, and this is what it would look like on the request form. So again, we have this additional 
pickup location that we configured in the previous uh, example. Uh, but now when the request form opens up, when the patron selects this pickup address, um, the patron will have the option to update any of the information that has been preloaded through the SAS feed as in our example. So the form will be populated with the information that uh, was submitted through the SAS feed, but the patron will be able to change this. And in this case, um, even if the uh, uh, personal delivery uh, was not updated through the SAS, so there's no information for the patron, the patron could still fill this in. So it would open up as a blank uh, empty form, but the patron could still fill in that information because now it's all updatable through the uh, through this uh, form. So in this example, I would go on and change the information. I added here the text uh, changed uh, to the form that um, opened up uh, for me. And I went on and submitted this request. We can see the request what it looks like uh, once it's been uh, submitted. So we can see that the uh, request has a pickup location, which is the pickup address. Again, that's the label that I chose when I configured this additional pickup location. It could be in your case, lab one, or reading room uh, four, or whatever you name it. And we can see also that it is a uh, facet, uh, the pickup location pickup address shows as my pickup location facet. Um, so it continues on through the life cycle of a personal delivery request. And if we take a look at the user account, we can see that the uh, original uh, pickup address, which came in as an external segment, is still here. But the result of the patron having changed that information on the request form is that another personal delivery or pickup address uh, has been created. It's been created as an internal segment because it was uh, submitted by the patron through Primo. So it's not an external one. And it has this created by system uh, Primo, which helps to identify these addresses that have been created uh, by the patrons. So, the, uh, uh, so you can report that information and see how many such uh, pickup addresses have been added by, uh, by patrons by looking up addresses that have been created by System Primo. And the fact that it's in a internal data, this additional uh, pickup address, uh, is what prevents this from being overridden by the next SAS feed. As you know, uh, if the user that is being updated in the next SAS feed has internal segments, email or addresses or any other uh, of the user segments, internal data is not overridden by the SAS feed. So if the pickup address from the SAS feed is for some reason changed, uh, the patron has already changed uh, his or her own uh, pickup address here. And uh, the system will from then on use this changed one, which is what the patron has um, selected to use. So when the request gets uh, uh, further uh, processed, the um, the uh, uh, request slip will also have that information about the uh, pickup address um, as the destination, the uh, pickup address. And again, if you're not letting your patrons change that information, then this would just say lab one and you don't need anything else uh, in here. If you do let the patrons change that information, then you probably wanna configure the form uh, to have more information uh, from the uh, XML. So again, the uh, XSLs, the letters are not changed by, by default. We, we don't want to change anything in your letters, but you can go on and change this uh, so that it would show up the show the details of the pickup address. Uh, when uh, creating these uh, slides for you, I did notice some issue here that I've reported for development to fix. Uh, and that is in our example, remember we had two pickup addresses, one that was submitted through the SAS and the other that the patron changed on the form. Uh, in that case, as we see here, the system um, on the slip used the external data and that should be, I uh, hope, soon fixed uh, so that it will show the uh, the internal data, the one that the patron has submitted, which is what it uh, is expected uh, to do because the patron has changed this information and what the form needs to have is the uh, information that the um, 
uh, that the patron has 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 changed. Uh, Moshe, let me just interrupt for one moment because we have a question which may be relevant to answer now rather than waiting. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sorry if you already mentioned this. Is the language for the pickup address modifiable by each library? Can we change pickup address to ship to address, for example? We have eCampus students who have to verify their shipping address before we mail their book to them. So I'm not sure about what what label um, is been asked about. If if it's uh, the options that show up on the request form um, on this uh, drop down, then this this information is the information that comes from the label that you configure, uh, and you can configure in different languages as well. Uh, because that's a, a standard um, uh, code table. Um, and certainly for the labels that show on the uh, slip, these are all labels that can be uh, changed as well. So I'm not sure if that's if that's the question. Maybe I misunderstood. I do believe that's the question. A person who asked a question, if you have an additional question or if we didn't answer it exactly, feel free to clarify in the chat. Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, I think you can continue motion. We'll see if we get a further response on that. Okay, sure. Let me know. Thank you. All right. So just just a, a, a last piece of information on that is that the next time that the patron would get a request form, uh, and again would have the pickup address option show as a valid option, then the uh, patron customized pickup address could show. So uh, in my case, I. I used, uh, I added the changed uh, information here, and you can see that the request form will pre-populate when I select pickup address. It will pre-populate with the change that I um, that I've made. Um, so actually, I was using here an example where I have a home address and I have a work address, and I uh, also uploaded to my user in advance a pickup address. Uh, but the way that um, I've shown it here. Uh, you can use it without having any of these addresses preloaded on the user account. So the user can have uh, none of these addresses in advance uh, and just would get the option to uh, request uh, on the request form and just get an empty form here and be expected to uh, add that information here. And this way the patrons will be creating their own uh, customized set of uh, pickup addresses. So uh, remember that example that I mentioned before. Uh, so you just create a uh, personal pickup address one and personal pickup address two or whatever you want to name it. The patrons would then uh, uh, place their first request and say pickup address one and put some information there. And then on the next request, if they want to reuse that same pickup location, they can just select it and it's already populated based on the previous request. If they want to use another pickup location, then they can choose pickup two and fill in that. And then the next time, on the third time they want to place a request, they can use we use uh, one or two, uh, and again, you can have up to 10 of these um, options. Um, so the example that I had here where information was preloaded on the user account is not a, a, a must. You can have without it because you're allowing the patrons to populate the, the address information. You do not have to uh, preload any of that information. And in fact, one of the uh, um, uh, one of the requirements that uh, we are hearing is that um, libraries were telling us, look, we want to have a personal delivery uh, address. We want to allow patrons to request personal delivery, but we do not maintain home address or work address on a SAS uh, feed for whatever reasons. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's privacy reasons. We don't have that information on our student information system. We don't preload it into the system, but we do want to allow patrons to uh, fill in that information if they want to get that service. Uh, so before this feature uh, came in, you couldn't have this uh, service without um, a preloaded work address uh, on the user account. Uh, by using this, you can use personal delivery and you don't have to preload that information. Patrons can just fill it in as they go. Okay. So let's take a look at a few more um, options um, that we can have here. Um, so we talked about a, uh, a, a preloaded uh, work or home address. Um, you could use your work addresses as the default for pickup addresses and enable patrons to change that. 
So if you would want the type of service to be, you have a home address, you have a work address, and you have a pickup address, uh, and you, the patron, um, can change that pickup address, but its default is your uh, home address. Yeah, that would be very simple to do. You would just uh, have in your in your feed, and again, we're looking at an SAS feed here, um, and in this user, I have an address, which is a work address, and one that is a home address, but I want to create another one that is the uh, first delivery address that I've enabled. And in my SAS feed, I'll just copy all of the work address to the personal delivery address. And the result of that would be that I have a patron that has, uh, in addition to the work address, a separate pickup address, which is identical to the work address because that's what came in through the SAS. And the patron experience here would be get to the request form, have a home work option, but also have a pickup address uh, option. Um, and then you can uh, go on and, uh, and, and it's default the same as your work address, but you can go on and change that uh, from the uh, Primo form and uh, um, use something else that you, the patron, would like to have as your uh, personal delivery address or your pickup address or whatever you label it to be. So that could be one way of achieving that. So uh, making use of existing addresses that have been preloaded as the default for a pickup address, but allowing the patrons to, to change that. Um, there could be another way to achieve that. And that would be by uh, changing some labels. So if we take a look at, at that example again, when I have a home address and a work address. And this time what I will do is that I will change the labels on the uh, Primo form. So, uh, and again, we're talking about Primo V configuration. Uh, I would go to the discovery menu, look at labels, and in the view at labels is where we can change the request form labels. And these labels are the personal delivery home address and the personal delivery work address. Out of the box, they're just called home address and work address, which is what we saw before in the request forms. But I could go on and change this. And here, for the sake of our example, I change them to be pickup address two and pickup address uh, three. So I haven't um, um, added any additional um, personal delivery information to the user accounts. They still have their home address, their uh, uh, work address, but I did change the label there. And the result will be that this is what the patron would see on the request form, the pickup address, that I configured this label, I configured on the initial code table, remember, on the first uh, uh, example we had. And then pickup address two and pickup address three, that's how they show up on the request form because of this configuration that I made. But actually, these are the home address and work address. So the uh, if I choose uh, pickup address uh, three, is actually the work address. And if the patron selects this, the work address just shows up um, here. And again, the patron can go on and change that information. So like I did here, I changed that information. And like our previous example, the result of that would be that another work address is created. Because again, remember, now we're just using our, reusing our home and work addresses. Um, so the, the additional work address has been created as an internal segment, like our first example. Again, with those same attributes that we mentioned before. So we have the uh, created by uh, System Primo and the uh, change in here. And note that this does not change the preferred indication because actually what the patron just did is the patron did not indicate that they want to change the preferred address, just that they want to use a different uh, pickup destination. So it did create another work address but it did not take the preferred indication and the preferred information is still the preferred information that has come through the SAS. The patients can change the preferred address, but that's done through the My Account in, in Primo where they can change their address uh, and choose a different preferred. In our case, they were just changing their uh, additional per, uh, personal delivery one. Okay, so just to recap uh, um, what we talked about. Um, so actually, Two type of, of features, you can use them together, but you don't have to. One is you can create your own library manage additional pickup locations. It could be different 
uh, pickup locations that you know, up to 10 of those additional ones, and you can enable, you can enable some of your patrons using terms of use to use those additional pickup locations. It will just show up as additional pickup locations. We did mention that um, to use those additional pickup locations means that you, um, you also use home address and work address if you have that information on user accounts. Uh, and again, I know that not, not all of you actually use a home address or work address. Uh, and in that case, uh, you, when you define additional pickup locations, uh, that will be the only options for the patients because you don't have a home or work address. Additionally, you can optionally, if you want, enable the patrons to actually uh, change this and you can make different types of uses of that. Uh, one use case would be to um, and allow your out of the box pickup locations, um, have them preloaded on the user accounts or not have them preloaded on the user accounts, have the users uh, change that information or actually fill in from blank that information. And you can even use that to allow the patients to have their own set of personally configured uh, additional pickup locations uh, that they can just uh, reuse uh, again and again based on their own uh, preferences. Okay, so Yo, are there any other uh, uh, questions or anything that? Uh... Um, yes, well, first of all, the other question was answered properly. So there's another one. Is there documentation for how to have a blank request form and allow users to enter the pickup location? Okay, so all you need to do is you enable the, the additional personal delivery um, and you enable the Primo uh, uh, form. Um, so again, if we uh, um, take a look at that configuration, let's see if I can navigate quickly uh, to it. So if you configure that Primo configuration, for the additional uh, fields. Um, okay, so that's from the uh, booking or hold request uh, request form. And you have enabled an additional pickup address. It will just show as a personal address with a blank, uh, blank fields there for the patrons to uh, fulfill. So all you need is to enable a personal delivery, enable the Primo configuration, and not preload any information into the user's account, that will give you this option. Okay, thank you. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, will this be developed for the resource sharing ILL form? Yeah, I've seen a comment about that, about requesting this also for resource sharing. So resource sharing does have personal delivery, but we haven't uh, pushed this feature as far as resource sharing. Uh, but uh, I definitely agree that uh, would be a, a good idea to have that. Uh, we don't have any uh, current timelines that I can tell you about when you would uh, have this deployed, but I essentially agree that uh, it's something that we, we would want to do. And um, Okay, so it's not right currently planned. Yes. Okay. Another one, could we use a statistical category if, say, we had a small subset of a patron type that we want using this? like a small subset of faculty who are approved for mail delivery while most are not? So yes, so uh, um, and when configuring a fulfillment in terms of use, you have the option to add statistical categories as input to the rules. Right, right, right. Right, and, and being that the terms of use is what controls who, has a, uh, who is eligible for the service, you can use statistical categories to define who, who can access this service. Right, that's a fairly new addition, if I'm not mistaken, Moshe, the statistical categories in the terms of use, correct? Yeah, that was added just last year, yep. All right, uh, so I'm glad to see that there's a, another use case for it. Uh, okay, someone else asked about the ILL form, with the, the resource sharing form, we already answered that one. Are there any plans to update the advanced policy configuration so that enabled additional delivery locations can be chosen as a value when creating a policy. And so that you can restrict the personal delivery to only allowing personal delivery for the additional delivery address in the TOU. Would you like me to repeat that, Moshe? <laughs> no, I, I understand the question because right, I've seen this ahead. question before. And uh, yeah, um, so, so I guess what, what, uh, what I understand is that 
um, um, you would like to be able to request only the additional ones, but not the, the home address. Uh, there is no such such option uh, currently. And again, I, I don't have timelines for uh, for when, when adding this. I did notice the, the comments that came in uh, about this uh, additional uh, option. Um, so if you do have uh, home addresses, uh, um, then there is no uh, uh, no way to suppress only the home address and allow only the, the pickup ones. Um, the the only uh, alternatives that I could uh, uh, suggest are, are these uh, options that that we've shown now. So you kind of uh, um, um, show the the home address as uh, as a pickup address. So it shows up as a pickup address for the for the patrons. It defaults to the home address, but it's a, a pickup address. Um, but if you uh, really, or, or you know, you can use home addresses, or or not not use the the address type home for a home address. But as long as you do do that, and you have home addresses with this type, um, you, you cannot use the additional ones without the home ones. Okay. Let's see what else we've got here. Okay, that's all we've got. And any any other questions or comments from anybody? Nothing else. Okay, so we will be posting the recording of this as usual. It will be on YouTube and accessible via the Alma 2024 Roadmap Webinar Series page that we showed earlier. It will also be on the Education and Webinars page. And we thanks everybody for joining, and we hope to see you next month for the Data Visualization Workbooks on Retention. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Moshe, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.